it's kind of a new experience. I've never really um, like done like a camp where you're bored or anything. But it's been fun actually. It's kind of like an adventure. You don't know until you mm -hmm. try it. Mm -hmm. I personally love it because I get to stay in one place. Um, number one, it's actually generally good for colleges. You, know, you get to say, yeah, I help a bunch of people you know, because I enjoy it. I can't. And it all goes back to the communication thing where you kind of get to get and get together with other people from other cultures. And for example, um, the community service club, you, you not only do you get some kind of service for it, but you learn, but you learn to kind of how to be charitable, how you can help other people. So you also learn many things about what you can do for other people. How does it make you feel to know that you're making such an impact on so many people's lives? Very good, actually. I mean, it actually helps me a lot, and also helps others. Like, several times I went to France, and then, like, I talked to um, a French person in French. <laughs> and, um, and then he was so relieved, and he was also happy, I immediately became one of his best friends. That's it was okay. an awesome experience. Meet me. Um, off the top of my head, I think I meet you a group of people. Have something in common, maybe common goals or common origins, and who hopefully enjoy each other's company, and under the best of circumstances, have some kind of um, shared responsibility or shared effort in having something happen or having something be created with respect to this specific community. It's a, a group of people working together for the common goal. <laughs> Doesn't know you that way at all. How is a community created? That's another good question. I think two ways. One is informally, like people just happen to stay together and say, this is fun, let's do it again. That's a community. And then a formal way where, like I mentioned, this University of Pennsylvania writing group where somebody invites you to join something, and maybe there's dues, there isn't for this group, but in some cases you pay dues, in some cases you have to um, do some kind of work to remain in the community, some kind of participation. Um, I guess there's all different kinds of ways that communities get started. The trick with a community is keeping it going, because a lot of times they have like a shelf life that after a while people realize I don't feel like meeting anymore. I don't feel like getting along with this person anymore. We don't have that much in common anymore. And the reason for starting the group might sort of disappear over time. You know, how do you keep it going? How do you keep it strong and keep it stable? That's a good question. I think the main thing is if you wanted to. If you really, really wanted to, then you do all the things that will keep it going. For example, contacting the other people in the community, making sure that there's a time and place you can get together, making sure that why you got together in the very first place still is important to you. It may have run its course and you say, you know what, we don't need to meet anymore. Sort of like a study group. After you finish studying, you might say, you know, this community we don't need anymore. And you sort of pick it up if you need it again. But I think the answer, the short answer to your question is you have to do some work. A community, I don't think, just keeps itself going. Even a family. And you may think back in your family where there are people in your family who make sure everybody gets together for holidays or make sure that you send out cards or make sure that you remember somebody's birthday. That's all work that keeps the community going. What do you think these new people give, or these people from different countries give to us? New personalities, new ideas. Do you think in their case it's hard to be a border? Honey is a really fun place. Um, if you uh on the real time focus. Excuse me. Um, I go to like movies and trips for borders and yeah, hang out with friends. Community is when everyone works together despite their race and color, and that Man, we stop. all work together to, stop, to raise children and take care of the elderly and make sure the middle class and is all pay child, child support. I think pay child support. Shut up. Means that what? everyone is gathered together and they are searching for a and common goal. Cheese steak. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what they are. You. 
move to another country or move to a new school and you meet new people, yeah, and then you become part of that new community. Can you leave a community? It depends. If you decide to like move out of community, you just go away from people. But it's a decision, so. Do you feel like, well, how do you feel like a community would affect you? It would affect my thoughts, my surroundings, how I learn. Do you enjoy, I know you're a boarder, do you enjoy boarding? Is that a community that you enjoy? Yes, because there's a lot of, lots of activities and people care about each other, so it's pretty good. Does that affect your community at home, like your family community? It does, actually. So sometimes you have to follow a set of rules, and sometimes you can't talk. So, yeah, it does affect your own community sometimes. Do you feel like you have to be particularly friends with everyone in your community? Can you not know everyone in your community, or can you just um, like more people other, more than others? You can do anything you want in the community. Uh, the community means that maybe for the, you know I'm an international student, and maybe for some English words I'm not I'm not very sure, but I think that the community is that a group of people, and they help each other and share some information or they when they face some difficulties they can they can figure out them well mm, lots of people will have a friend and something like the friendship so so what are a couple of communities that you would say that you're that you belong to that you're proud to be part of uh, maybe it's my Fencing team. I like fencing and it brings me a lot. I like that um, it is very excited and you, um, you know that when you compete uh, with other people, uh, you will improve yourself and something that you will um, your, um, enhance the friendship. You will have lots of be um, best friends and have the same habits. So. So you said you learn, you meet a lot of people and become with a lot of people through your communities. Is this true? Yeah. Now, what do you think makes you, would you have to know the people before you go into the community or do you feel like you can meet people through the community and you can make friends or make yeah. new relationships? Uh, I think we can meet some new friends because, uh, you know, when you go to, a, uh, for example, you like the basketball and uh, you go to the basketball team, and you and you that um, someone knows that you are very like basketball and you talk about the basketball and day by day you will be make lots of friends. Yeah. You said that community, like your community helps you make friends. Does it help you do anything else? Like Yeah, maybe sometimes uh, in the fencing team I can improve my skill and I can share some information about something else. So Okay, so you're saying that you can share your information. What, what are a list of things or what things do you think that you can give to your community or give to the people in your community? Uh, sometimes maybe, mm, you know, I'm, I'm good at math and I like algebra. And some of my classmates always ask me some questions and that's in the community. I help them how to do the, some math questions. So I think that's about uh, how to share information and how to, how to help each other. So that's Went to boarding school. Um, I've been a part of a resident community for a number of years, um, and it's a really big part of who I am. Um, and so I like giving back. You said that you used to board. How is that different or similar to the boarding at home? Um, all of the communities that I have been a part of, the boarding communities, have had 80% boarding students and only 20% day students. So this is kind of almost like the opposite. So the boarding community here, um, even though it's almost the same size as um, the, the schools were much smaller. So even though it's almost the same number of students, the percentage is really different. So the way that it functions, um, 
within the big school community, it's very different. How would you say it would be different if there are more or less boarding students? Um, it's really different when you don't have at least 50% boarders because they're such a minority. And so sometimes the boarding students, um, I think, feel... I don't, I don't think they feel left out, but I think their situation is really different than going home every night. Um, and so we do try to build community for them so that they feel like they have a community. Would you say that they're sort of like a family? Um, I, w I would say that. I think each dorm has their own kind of sense of identity and, and that when we come together at meals and things like that, it does feel like a big family. Do you think it's a different experience being a boarder than a day student? Absolutely. So. Um, I think um, having, having not, um, I'm not terribly familiar with the day community here, but I think um, the boarders have a lot of, they have to grow up a lot quick, more quickly, I think, because they don't see their parents every day. Um, they can't, um, they don't go home to a family where they have a meal, not that everyone has family meals, but um, I think they, uh, a lot of them travel thousands and thousands of miles away from home and maybe go home once or twice a year. Um, so I think they're a lot, they're very independent, a lot of the boarding students. Um, so I think it's, it's just different because you don't, you don't go home every day. How do you think their friends affect them, like being around them all the time? Um, I, well, I think living in a community is tricky um, because you never have time to yourself, especially if you have a roommate, which most of our boarding students have. Um, so they're learning, I think, um, before they go to college, they're learning the skills of how to live in a community and how to, um, what, how their actions in the dorm and in their room and and around um, the common areas, how their actions affect other people. What else do you think they maybe take from it, or what other qualities do they acquire or characteristics? Um, may, the main quality, um, I think, is self-awareness. I think they learn independence. I think they learn really good study skills because they're, nobody's saying to them, you need to do your work now, you need to start your work. Um, I think they learn to work with distractions. Um, I, I, I think we give them good skills that most kids gain when they go to college, but they get a leg up on it. How do you think the international students um, affect the non-international students, but so boarding? Um, yes. Well, I think it's a really great mix, and what we try to do is we try to mix up um, when we do roommates, we try to give, um, we try to not put two students from the same country together, so that they, especially freshman year, once they're, once they're here for a second year, they choose their roommate. But when they first come, we try to give them, make them. Um, I don't know if it's. We're not forcing them, but we're let, we're helping them to appreciate other cultures and to get along with someone from a different country. So we have very few kids who come in and live with kids from their own country. And it also helps with the ESL students. So when they're learning English, if they have an English-speaking roommate, then they're going to learn English more quickly. What else do you think that these people from international, from other countries, what do you think they take away from us? Or what do you think it helps them um, well, I think they, the thing is, we have so many different cultures. I mean, we have students from, um, from China, from Japan, from Thailand. We have students from Turkey, from Russia, from Spain. I mean, we have, we have students from all over the world. And so they not only learn about American culture, but they learn about cultures, European culture, you know, different Asian cultures, people from all over the world. So, so I think 